thank you very much to Mercy for stepping in uh, to just go through this presentation uh, and explain. Mercy's based at Porrit as well, uh, and she'll go through the presentation, just talk us through it, and then afterwards we'll have a chance to comment and ask questions and so on. I mean, when it comes to the questions as well, I've been there quite often, so I'm happy to help also, but um, there may be questions for anyone. Mercy, over to you, and thank you very much for stepping in. Okay, thank you very much, John. Um, greetings to everyone who is present today uh, on this learning process. Um, so, Mercy, uh, sorry. Pored. Mercy, Trust sorry. It. Mercy, sorry to interrupt. Okay. Uh, if the connection is not fantastic, so I would just switch off your video just to really help. Or maybe it's me. Many is it just me? No, no, it's 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 a bit uh, wobbly. Yeah. Mercy. So uh, maybe if you switch off your video, and then whenever you want me to move to the next slide, let me know. And thank you everyone for your patience. Connections uh, are always. <laughs> Good and bad. Go ahead, Mercy. Okay. Um, so, Pore Trust is situated in uh, Zimbabwe, in the southern part of. Uh, I see Pore Trust is situated in Africa, in Zimbabwe, in the southern part of um, Africa, and we are in the Manicaland province, um, the low out part of Chimani Mani. I think you can go to the next one. Oh, um, oh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I think it's the earphones that I'm using. I think it's the earphones that I'm using. I'll, I'll put them off. So now we are you situated are really in the lower vault of... Uh, mm. uh, okay. We are, situ we are situated in the lower vault of uh, Chimani Mani. Uh, Chimani Mani has uh, different types of region, region one, region uh, two, and region five, all together in one uh, province, which is Manicaland. So we are in the low vault of Chimani Mani, where there are very low uh, rainfalls of about 300 millimeters to 400 millimeters. Um, so Porret is uh, engaging in water harvesting. Oh, next, uh, next slide, please. Okay, I think I'd also explain that. It's in the low valley, as you can see, there are uh, different regions. Region one is that's where there's uh, high rainfall and uh, different types of rainfall going uh, down. So Porret is in the uh, low valley where there is lower rainfall. As you can see, there are different uh, types of uh, regions in Zimbabwe. So it's quite low and low rainfall and it's very dry and 300 to 400 millimeters is the kind of rainfall that we receive each year. Next slide. Okay, so Porridge started um, in 1996 where we moved to Chaseyama. Uh, Julius used to stay in uh, Chikupa, where he was working at Select, uh doing permaculture as well. So he moved in 1996 to Chasiyama, and then Porret was registered in 2006. Uh, Julius in uh, Select was doing uh, a lot of water harvesting as well, and where uh, it was made possible that a lot of sources of water which were drying up were able to be regenerated. So when he moved to Chaseyama, he started to practice the permaculture uh, techniques of harvesting water and just making uh, his homestead a place where he could stay, a microclimate uh, place where it's good uh, conditions <coughs> as an uh, as an intemperate because it, there was a lot of uh, there, there was a lot of heat and they there was need to have a microclimate there. So in the process of doing permaculture in, in his homestead, the villagers were, were, were excited about it and 
that's when uh, there was a uh, porridge there when the government came in and did a, a and did a celebration to the work that was happening there. Then the minister who visited uh, saw that it was a good thing for porridge uh, to register and become an organization since it was doing a wonderful work that needed to to grow and go further. So when it started, it got involved with uh, three words, word five, word two, and word three. Um, okay, next slide. Okay, so uh, because of this area that is dry and you know when it's dry and no enough water there, it's also it means also no food on the table. So due to these uh, reasons, uh, the communities would uh, were having different kinds of conflicts due to this lack of the resources. So most uh, smallholder farmers were sur were surviving from farming before when the rain was okay but then when they tried to strive and continue farming it proved to be difficult because this the soil become poor and less fertile and because of rain they could not harvest anything so people started to lose heart in uh, being involved in subsistence farming and reducing a, a number of farmers who used to, f to do their own farming and feed uh, from their food that they grow on their own, they started to reduce and started to depend on uh, food that would come, like food aids uh, that would come to help them to have food on their table. So whilst we're working with these uh, three words, when the community started to see the work that was happening at Porridge, we got involved with uh, a lot of uh, households that amounted to 450 households and uh, a permaculture club was formed, which is called the Chastayama Permaculture Club, where, the, where these um, farmers would come together and discuss on how they can have a way forward uh, for them to also implement this idea that was happening at Porridge. Next slide. So when the Chasiyama Permaculture Club was formed, we started with 31 members in 2015 and 450. We, we started from 31 member households and 450 members in the club. And uh, we started doing a permaculture club meetings where these uh, communities will come together to understand on how they would move forward and what, on what they would like to learn from our poets and well, as well as us learning from them. Our next slide. Next slide. Okay, so we go on to water harvesting. Why the reasons for water harvesting? Why we should be, why, why harvesting water is important as we live uh, as humans. Uh, it, it, is, uh, it is a valuable thing, water as it is used in different ways in, in our homes for cooking, for bathing, agricultural purpose. So um, there are different ways of harvesting water underground uh, by harvesting waters in tanks through the, our roofs, the water that flows in and we harvest it. We should not be letting it go to the sea where we cannot, when we are, where we are not able to use it, but rather we should harvest it like the way we harvest food when we harvest fruits and uh, grains for uh, for us to eat. That's the same way that we should also be harvesting water.
Okay, next slide. We go on to the principles of uh, water harvesting. There is need to know the source, like where do the water starts to flow from? Uh, water start, there are many sources of where well, there are catchment areas, like in Chimani Mani, one of our catchment area is in Chikuka, they are in the hive veld. And also when we are looking at other water harvesting, there are, we, we also start from even the catchment of our roofs when the water rains down, it's also a source where the water is flowing and starting to move from the place, from the point where it starts from the from the clouds when it comes down onto the ground here where we can touch it and see it. So when this water reaches the ground or the roofs, we have to find a way of slowing down the movement of the water and the runoff. There are different ways of slowing down this water, which are uh, constructing the swells, um, contours, earth dams, we can also use gabions to reduce uh, the flow of water to allow it to sink into the soil. There are also, you can also be planting trees and uh, uh, using uh, water tanks to collect water from your roof. This, by doing this, one is able to slow down the movement of water whilst uh, reducing uh, soil erosion, which takes away the richness that we have that we already have on our soil. Then when we are able to slow down this water and spread it and make it sink, we then should be also able to save that little water that we have. When, whenever we are taking our shower or when we are washing or watering, we need to be creating systems that save each and every drop and be able to sink it whenever possible, even if when it's not, uh, when, it's, when, we have, when we have passed the, the process of the water raining, then we should also be able to sink it whilst we are uh, using it in our houses and as, and as well when we are feeding our animals, we should be able to see the good use of the water that we would have saved from this rain. And, store it well. Uh, next slide. Okay, so then um, oh, trees are a very valuable tool to be able to also sink and sink water and harvest it in our in our day-to-day -day lives. So the cutting down of trees should be also minimized so that we are able to sink water each time it rains. Also the movement of livestock when it steps on the ground, its poles when when they they step in there's a wherever the animals, the birds and the livestock step, they, the water, when water comes in and rain, these small holes that they create and where they tremble upon grass and nature, this enables also water to sink well into the soil each time there is livestock activity. So we see also livestock as a, 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 a way of uh, increasing the way we harvest our water and allowing our water to sink into the soil. So water harvesting uh, takes a holistic approach for it to be able to be and be able to re regenerate our um, and to be able to regenerate our environment. We the livestock, the trees, uh, the rocks, the land that is all around us, the grass we should be able to see a better way that we use them 
so that we are able to sink this water for them to also for both of these things to work for greater good next slide so when porridge started in uh, 2006 it started growing and we started uh doing uh swells and water harvesting in larger scale to an extent that we have we now have more than 34 egg dams at the center and uh and gabions and uh water harvesting pits to demonstrate uh this activity of water harvesting as you can see on the map on the map the aim of uh porridge center is to be a demonstration that shows uh, this concept of water harvesting so that uh, participants won't, won't be in a position to only read the theory and not only not seeing where it is being done. So Porridge is doing uh, different techniques to harvest water where it's harvesting millions of liters of uh, water at the center. Next slide. Next slide. It, it takes a little time to come up sometimes, but it, it's coming. <laughs> yes. Now, so there are factors to consider when designing your water harvesting systems. You need to know the, why you are harvesting water. Are you harvesting water so that you can have enough to drink or you're harvesting to have uh, enough uh, bathing water or for agriculture? Then you need to know your catchment area. Where is your catchment area? Where does your water uh, drop onto when it comes from the clouds? Then you need to look at the vegetation because vegetation is also a crucial uh, uh, component when you are harvesting water. Uh, what do you look at when you are looking at your vegetation? You see if it is um, concentrated enough to be able to, to sink the water. If not, then it means you have to add more plants there to be able to harvest this water. Then you look at the gradient or slope of the land. If your gradient is too steep, then you would need to know how you, you mark your swells or earth dams and also know how you spread your water so that when the force of the water is harvested then the 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 weight of the water will not uh, break your earth dams you need to also consider the soil type is it sandy is it clay because when it's sandy it means uh you need to look for more method to be for the water to be held on the to be held on the dams or on this well, since uh, this soil can easily break. But then when we are looking at clay soil, then the, the clay soil is able to hold water for long. Then you need to look at your annual rainfall as to when does rain come in your place. If it, it is coming at the end of the year or in the middle of the year, then you are able to plan when to start digging or when to stop pre-planning. Uh, is crucial then you need to know your storage facilities St storage facilities as in are you using uh, water tanks or you are only um, harvesting your water into the ground then the period of utilization to also know the if the amount of water that you are harvesting is enough for you or you need to find more methods to be able to harvest even more water. Next slide. So when porridge started engaging in this uh, water harvesting techniques, there was uh, there were a lot of changes. As you can see, there the edem is uh, holding. Um, quite a large amount of water there 
uh, it's a demonstration for one to see uh, how an earth jam looks, uh, looks like when you harvest water. Then the spillway there is to enable that when the dam is full, is fuller, then the water can uh, flow out and uh, prevent the dam from breaking. Okay, next slide. As you can see from uh, when you harvest water, there are a lot of elements that starts to come out, out that shows regeneration. Um, oh, on these uh, earth dams, when water is harvested during the rain season and going on when there's still water in the dams, we see a lot of insects there. And we also see a lot of frogs moving there. And also the temperature is reduced due to, uh, due to, to, to this water harvesting techniques. And also, the, as you can see, this water harvest, uh, these uh, earth dams, they are made where there is a steep slope. But then to prevent the dam from breaking, there are plants, as you can see, there is a purple tree there on this other dam there to prevent also the, that also strengthens the dam walls. Okay, next slide. Next slide. Okay. Okay, these are a large number of pictures that uh, shows and proves the what have techniques that we are doing at a porridge. As you can see also, this swell is spreading the water. Rather, when you put an A-frame, you are able to follow the contour well so that when the water comes in it does not break but rather moves in a slow way where the water sinks properly in the soil and not damaging anything next slide next slide So considering the amount of rainfall that we receive at Porret, um, we know that we receive 300 to 400 milliliters of rainfall per year approximately. But with this 34 edems, we are able to harvest a million liters of water. So this shows this only shows how much water we are losing when we don't have any water harvesting techniques, uh, feeling and thinking that we have enough uh, water to use or not, uh, not really seeing the effects of not harvesting any water. But you can see the millions of liters that we harvest each time, each year the water rains on these dams that were constructed and also this water harvesting techniques will be preventing our soils from, from being degraded, which means we are keeping um, the richness of the soil, which is able to, which makes it possible for us to provide food on the table. Next slide. So for it uh, to, to be able to contain this challenge of farmers who are facing challenges in having harvest each, each year because of low rainfall and high temperatures, 
the communities has also been engaged in these uh, water harvesting techniques where forage is teaching farmers from around the villages on how to use A-frames to mix wells and earth dams. As you can see on the slide, how the participants are so eager to know how these are, how these techniques of water harvesting work. Next slide. Okay, after building these wells in the community, as you can see, the, uh, the participants are so excited, looking forward to the results of the swells, probably uh, meaning that there is hope uh, for more food on the table. Next slide. So after engaging communities in water harvesting, we have, um, now we have seen a lot of change um, in the community that each farmer who, who uh, constructed swells in their uh, fields were able to harvest in that same year when they, uh, when they constructed the swells and water was harvested in them. We also have a video on these uh, testimonies of farmers when they are appreciating the knowledge that was brought to them on water harvest. Next slide. We also have um, another community member who, ca who came for a permaculture design course at Porridge and uh, got to know about these water harvesting techniques and started implementing them in his field. As you can see, when he implemented uh, the water harvesting techniques, there was uh, bareness in the soil and not enough to make the, 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 uh, the family to have a good yield but after this water after implementing the water harvesting techniques at their homestead they are able to harvest a good yield and also they were able to dig a borehole in their homestead which they are even fetching water even when the the rain season is yet to come but they are able to to fetch water from the borehole that they dug close to eight meters and they could uh, uh, catch some water there. These are all the good results of harvesting water. Next slide. So in 2019, we had 28 farmers in nine village in Ward 2, and they were able to dig um, swells of uh, 5,131 meters. And in 16 farmers in six village in Ward 3, they were able to dig 2,695 meters of swells. And 11 farmers in three village watch five, they were also able to dig 2,610 meters of swells. These swells can harvest a total of 3 million uh, liters of water. Um, and uh, these farmers would come together as, in, um, as in, in one village, they choose which homestead they are going first and then they do the digging, then move to another village and do the same until the people would, would have showed interest in these wells are, are done with digging their wells. Uh, next slide. So 
So looking at the opportunities um, and way forward on this work that Poret is uh, engaged in, they um, and a number of farmers are now interested in uh, these water harvesting techniques. And um, now we have more than five or more than three words that we are working with. We now have more than five words that have affiliated to the Chasiama Permaculture Club and uh, at Homestead and the, the, mem the membership has also increased by double due to this uh, good work of uh, water harvesting that is seen in the community and at the center. And even as poet, we are also invited by different organizations around Zimbabwe who are also interested in these uh, water, water harvesting techniques and different trainings that we hold, like the PDC trainings, the uh, pest and disease management uh, that we hold here at Poret by seeing the testimonies that are being uh, unveiled by the farmers. Uh, and for sure, when a thing is working well, uh, people can see it and they start to show their, in, their interest. So uh, Poret is now expanded to uh, Mutare district and Chipinga district where it is involved with um, other farmers there who are interested in this work that is happening. So uh, as Poret, we are growing fast and quickly uh, due to this work that is uh, happening around us. And also the agritex officers, the, the ones that work with the Zimbabwean government are also showing interest in this work. As we started, we were working closely with them and uh, there were also challenges there, here and there for them to understand this kind of uh, approach of farming since they had their own type which is uh, industrial and so now they are getting to have the interest and there's a lot of uh, interest from the government as well we received uh, the first lady who visited our poet recently to see the work that we are doing and a lot of uh, youth festivals that are happening for people to to be able to see and to know this um, work that we are doing. We're also invited to, uh, for policy development in Mutare uh, to, to start implementing this uh, kind of farming, farming methods, which are bringing uh, great results. So as for it, we are very happy that we are also learning a lot as well as the community benefiting from the work that we are doing. Next slide. So on these slides, we are seeing how water harvesting can uh, bring a lot of amounts of food. And of course, when there is food there on the table, the family is happy and uh, there's uh, there's lesser conflicts in the community when uh, there are enough resources to use. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah, it's there. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for this. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks. I was quite nervous at the nervous at the beginning, but I think it was uh, getting better as I was going through. You know, all, all of you people are so delicate that I become shivering. <laughs> but I'm happy that I could bring out a few words for you to understand. I hope you understood it very well. And yeah, thank. You. I'm Fantastic. This Thanks so much, Mercy. You did a wonderful job. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Sorry.
Sorry, there's someone. Yeah. Thanks so much, Mercy. You did a wonderful job there stepping in at the last minute. But I think it's great. Mercy's grown up as she was presenting. Uh, she's grown up in a water family. Uh, they think water. You can hear that when she says, save each and every drop. There's a real water. You can see a real water consciousness. And it's not, I think the point comes out, it's not that complicated, but it's just really understanding water and getting water in the ground, spreading it, sinking it. That's what it's about. Uh, and the Pitti family live there in Chaseyama community, and they've been doing it themselves, and they're working with the community to do it. So that, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. And now we'll, we'll open it up. Uh, any questions, any comments? Uh, I suspect Julius might still be in the background somewhere. I don't know if he can answer any questions. Uh, but even if he can't, others might be able to answer as well. There, there was one question about how deep are the dams. Well, just very quickly, I mean, it, it's, they, they vary. I mean, they're 34 dams and they all vary, but they're all smallish dams. Uh, and it's all part of an overall design. And it's all about looking at how much water you need to catch and spread and so on. So I think it's difficult to say exactly how deep it, it, it depends on it. Uh, so I don't know if there are any more questions. Atford has raised his hand, John. Okay, go ahead. And then we'll see CV. Okay, um, thank you very much. Yeah, um, I'm very much, 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 much touched with the presentation. Now my question comes in because as where I'm found, I'm found in the west where most of the land is uh, sandy. So if I'm to construct, I will start constructing, I'll give an example of these dams. How better can we do it? Because I've gotten something there. I think on the part of uh, harvesting, there's something that I've seen, like these classes that we have. I think there I don't have a problem, like in coming up with the tanks and other things. I make. But when it comes to dams, how best can we do that? Like in a sandy area, like the southern part of Zambia. Great. Thank you for that, Atford. Go ahead, uh, Busisiwe. We'll, we'll just get the questions and then we'll... Uh... Thank you so much, John. Thank you so much uh, to Poret for quite a, an informative presentation. Well done. And uh, yeah, very much interesting. And I wanted to say from the perspective of a farmer, as I said, I'm a farmer. Here in the Eastern Cape and in South Africa, we had uh, the university, Rhodes University uh, Environmental Learning Center embark a project like this, the, the one that Porret has, 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 has done. And it was a mostly on for, for small scale farmers. And it really did help during drought and people at least could have the food from their small gardens. But then the challenge becomes, a, like Porret has, has said, a resources for farmers to have the equipment to do this and also to scale up so that then even the farmers who have got bigger lands, much lands, uh, can be able to embark on rainwater harvesting techniques uh, like the ones that we've just seen. And I think uh, this, this platform is, is really in a, in a, in a good uh, uh, whatever for, for, for that, because if we come together, we can be able to discuss and decide about how to help the communities in this. So I want to commend Poret, I want to commend the water school. Uh, I think we are in the right, in the right, uh, 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 in the right uh, direction. And as I'm sitting here, I'm like even frustrated because I did invite my team from the Invoto Bubomi Learning Network, the ones that were leading this project uh, with Rhodes University and the Water Research Council because they also have got a good story to tell because out of that, then they had to go to another province and introduce the rainwater harvesting. And they developed an online course uh, where one could uh, register and have the information. 
or maybe register to have a certificate. Either you, you, you do it so that then you can just have the information or you can also be certificated. Thank you so much. Great, thank you very much, Busisiwe. Have we got any other hands? Uh, not at the moment. I think Mercy uh, wants to say something. Yeah, Mercy, Mercy, go ahead. Did you, you your hand is up? Uh, I was, um, I, I was starting to, uh, I, I raised the hand when I wanted to answer the question of how deep are the earth gems. They oh, are, okay. they are different kinds of depth, but uh, not, not more than, five meters deep. I think they are one meter, two meters, three meters, different sizes, depending on the uh, place where they are dug. Okay. Great, thanks. I see good. there's a follow on question from that. I think Marianne has asked. But Petra uh, also wants to ask. Yes, uh, but the follow on question to that would be, uh, Marianne said, I would have loved to know if the water levels from the wells are still the same during the dry season. Okay, the, the water levels are, are changing. Uh, we, have, we, we took a video uh, which we presented previously on our water harvesting workshop that happened um, online. And we were taking a video of uh, this river that is on the downwards part of Corret site, which, has, which was dry. And we are going to take another uh, video on the same date to show the change on the water levels. But we are sure that the water levels are changing, but we have not uh, have a, like a proof that you can uh, see yourself. But by the end of this year, we'll be able to take another video to see uh, the changes during the season. Thank you. Uh, Petra, go ahead. My question is, do you just stick and then you leave it or you put in clay or you just use what you have, or do you put in some some branches or trees to so the water stays longer in the soil, or how do you do that? Uh, we dig the soil that is there and pile it at the end here to make the earth dam on the earth dam side. Then we use the rocks that are there to put on the dam wall there, and then we plant trees there so that the soils also continue to come together. But uh, when we did all that, when the water comes in, the dam still remains uh, okay. And we also have a spillway where if the dam is fuller, then the water uh, can flow out mm -hmm. uh, nice and slowly so that it does not break uh, the dam. And as for swells, the swells are marked with an A-frame such that the gradient is not too steep such that the swell, the water is too heavy on the wall of the swell, but it mm. flows along the contours mm -hmm. and reducing the, the, the speed of the flow. Mm -hmm. One more question. So when you have the dam, do you keep the animals away or do you also use this water for drinking water? And if so, um, is there a way to clean it? Um, current, oh, we use the animals that are within the yard, they use that water to drink. Uh, recently now we have been having more uh, different kinds of animals that, uh, that were coming into the place to, uh, to feed from uh, this uh, microclimate that is being created there. But then for drinking, we have not drunk it yet, but I'm... I know we will use the boho water for drinking, but I know that one can filter it with uh, scent or boil it and one is able to drink it. But for us, uh, we have not been drinking that because we also have a boho water that we use for that. And, and I think just to, to add and link sort of having been there, uh, and this links to Atford's point, I think one of the main uh, positives about those dams is that they're not just harvesting water, there, there is clay in their soil, so it does hold the water fairly well. Uh, but they're also infiltrating a lot of water into the ground, so they're recharging the, the borehole that they use. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think 
where you have a lot of sandy soil, Atford, that's something to think about is, is, is what is your aim? Is it to, to hold the water in a pond like that or to sink it in the ground and then access the water from a well? So that, that's what quite a lot of people do. Uh, I mean, you can line your sandy, uh, sandy soil ponds with, find some clay somewhere and line them, but it, it's more complex, but there, there are different ways you can do it. Any, any other questions or in the chat or water to drink would be from roofs collecting containers yeah so mm -hmm. uh, Josephine has said this has been fantastic mercy Josephine's a big water harvester herself so that's a that's a nice compliment from Josephine for your Great I think Petra, Petra is still waving her hand. She's got yes. one more. <laughs> Thank you, because I have to go very soon to the doctor. This is why I'm waving my hands. Um, she, you know, I just, in our area, we tried to drill a borehole just recently, but our water, we cannot use it at all. It has such high mineral content that we cannot use it. So we are in a really, really, uh, it's a very devastation. It's really a devastation, the situation that we are in. So just before I hear that she said you can clean water with sand, or if anyone has an idea of how to clean rainwater, I will be very happy. Or maybe this could be another topic here. Um, I would very much like to know more about that, of how to clean that water, because since it also... Um, has a lot of E. coli bacteria in it, but also a lot of minerals, which I would really like to know how to clean rainwater for a population. Or clean the water, you know, if we don't have enough, enough tanks, enough water tanks. There, there is an earth dam where we are in the area, but as soon as the rain stops, the water is gone in four weeks. And then there is nothing left. So we really try to find a way of... Um, yeah, find a solution in the area. I think that would be good to as a possible topic here. We yes, could we could certainly like put that, that. down. Uh, and I and I can imagine us in due course having something like uh, I don't know what you might call them water clinics, so people bring <laughs> their issues and 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 others can share and around a, a particular problem that people have because uh, it's all it's always so context specific. Uh, mm. Yeah, there was yeah. mentioning something. Water Just before and... that, John, sorry. Uh, yeah. What I wanted to say was that maybe the uh, next one that we are planning could touch on the point uh, Petra's raising, yes. cleaning oh, the water yeah. through the dams. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. Sand dams. Mm. We, 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 can, we can do that. And, and we're hoping to do something on sand dams, which is from Kenya. Uh, someone's offering to present. So it could link in with that, definitely. It's a big topic for yeah. full term. Could I say one more thing quickly? Uh, if anybody has joined and uh, actually we you aren't on the mailing list, could you please put your email in the chat box, and then you will we we'll, we can keep you updated as to when the next meeting is and what the topics are. Um, we wouldn't otherwise know how to get in touch with you. So please do do put your uh, email in into the chat box, and then we'll get it from there. Great, excellent. Well done, Mini, for remembering that one. Any more? Bye bye. All right, bye bye. Thanks bye -bye. for joining. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> See you again. Thank you. Thank you. Any more Great. questions? Oh, there's a hand from Sam. Sam, go ahead. Samuel, Nancy. Yes, yes, thank you very much. Um, I think this was a great, great, great presentation. Now, my challenge here, uh, we dug, I don't know whether it was a dam. Oh, it was a, a pond. I don't know what it was. We dug a big hole and uh, we wanted water really to, to collect water from the road runoff. But it has been collecting water, but all the water disappears as soon as it goes in. What, what, did this, what do these people do to ensure that the water is retained? That's one. The second one. Um, you've mentioned that you have uh, 34 dams on your land. How big is your land to be able to actually accommodate all the 34 dams? Because I want you to, 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 to relate it to our place here and 
understand how can we make these dams on such a, a small area. Thank you. Mercy, are you happy to go ahead with that a bit? Yeah, uh, the land is uh, it's a uh, twenty hectares land, and uh, also on the question that he asked about the water sinking and disappearing, if it did not break the dam but disappeared whilst it was in the dam, it means it was sinking into the soil, so it is being harvested into the water table. Perfect. Uh, Sam, does that kind of answer your question? Uh, you get, Mercy is an accountant, and you see this accountant think, is yeah, it answers. inside out. It's fantastic. Uh, so but nice my, to hear. My expectation. My expectation was I, I, I wanted actually to to not not to harvest water not uh, for sinking but actually to be able to to maybe to use it for irrigation to use it for other things but it, it really goes so but I well, think I, I understand what he's saying yeah just just to uh, jump in Sammy, to find some clay and to to line your there are other techniques where you can use vegetation to create a layer an impenetrable layer so there are obviously your soils very well drained so it's just sinking they do have a, a fair amount of clay content in the soil where they're making their dams so they it does hold it perhaps for longer than you can but uh th that's what i think you would need is, is some uh, way of sealing your dam. Anyone else got any ideas for Sam? Yeah, um, um, you could also make an artificial uh, pond where you would uh, dig that hole and put a plastic on the a thicker plastic, then lay rocks on the edge of the um, uh, pond. Then when the water comes, it it collects and does not uh, sink, but it remains in the artificial. Yes, yeah, so I suppose it, it, that's great. Thank you, Pusisiba. So it, it depends on what your, your, your aim is and what your budget is and so on. But if you really want to catch it to use it for gardening, then there would need to be some kind of lining of, of the pond or the dam. Uh, but I mean, many people do construct these kinds of ponds with the main aim of sinking the water, especially if it's large volumes of water, uh, then you, you're really raising your water table. Any more before we kind of come to an end? Because I know everybody is... Uh... Zachary. Go ahead, Zachary. Yes, I was saying that uh, this is a water school. We are learning a lot of things and uh, this is excellent. I was thinking that uh, because questions are like these are coming up, if there can be maybe somebody who can come up with a presentation about how to make maybe like a dam, a dam or a water pan, if it's in sandy soil, what needs to be done so that you can have like a collective ideas and people can be able to learn a lot from sessions like those ones. But I think this is very good. This That's why it's a water school. People are learning these things for the first time. Some have engaged these things for a long time. But uh, if a session can be done where we, we maybe how to make uh, these things can be very good. But I think uh, it's excellent. Thank you. Fantastic suggestion. Thank Thanks, Adrian. Definitely we can do something like that. Any more? Uh, hands or comments or yeah. great I hello don't know john philip or uh Mini, was, was, yeah maybe i'll say something but Busisive, go ahead yes as i have written on the chat today what's nice also about these dams are uh, one can even begin to farm fish there for extra income or for extra food security where you where they, the villagers get their protein from. So it becomes a, for a dual purpose now. Yes, mm. thank you. Mm. Mm. Thank you, thank you. Great. Go ahead, Mini. Yeah, so first of all, I really want to congratulate you, uh, Mercy, for taking on the challenge of presenting your work. Uh, you know, it's 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 it was really clear 
and it was very heartwarming to see the the work that Porette is doing. And it's so so uh, you know my heart really feels delighted because that's the kind of work that we've been seeing happening in India, and you know that that communities can do water harvesting. And as you rightly said, those sent that those words that it brings more food on the table. And when there's more food on the table, there's less conflict in the community. And uh, th th those those are the things that really the ground level uh, encouragement of bringing the water back in the landscape you know that's what that's that's the attempt to see that that kind of uh, forward movement happens and you really explained it very very well so thank you very much mercy you stepped in for julius and uh, uh, we were all able to surmount the connection problems so thank you everybody else for your patience for doing that um one thought i had was uh, the water school will is all about actually putting these kind of methods online and make them accessible to communities in various ways so if you have uh, work that you are doing on the ground if there are projects or videos that you would like to talk about or send please don't hesitate to contact us send them to us talk to us the more as we saw with comments even in this session the more people uh, you know uh, learn about the work of different communities the more they learn for themselves to be able to do it in their own regions and it's really helpful um, you know and and at, at some point I, I really like the words john that you said water clinics so maybe as part of the water school we can have water clinics as well where people bring real life water challenges that can be resolved either through what is on the school or through what people are saying on these forums i can see philip wants to say something philip go ahead no just that um the idea is that we're gradually building up a kind of library of talks and methods. So um, on waterways.world slash Africa, this, um, we've got um, different presentations, different recordings. Um, so, so we'll gradually build that up. Mm. So, so this presentation will put up as well. Yeah, thank you, Philip. Yes. So uh, you'll see the past presentations on waterways.world slash Africa. Philip, could you kindly put the link in the message chat box? And uh, the today's presentation will also go up there with the recording. So it's uh, it's there for you to access as and when you want. And we will send uh, meeting notes around uh, so that you can listen to it uh, at leisure and pass it on to people who wanted to join and couldn't join. Um, John, anything else? I saw Atford's hand. Atford, a quick question or comment before we close. Did you put your hand up? Yeah, Nessa is... Atford, we can't hear you. Put your question in the chat. Yeah, I think maybe do that. Your question or comment in the chat. Okay, so thanks very much, everybody. And we're, we'll be in touch with you. We'll share the recording of the, of the presentation. John. Um, first and foremost, I'd just like to you know, thank the presenter. Because as for me, I think I'm baptized. Sorry, I missed that. Uh, next meeting, 2nd November. Yeah, okay. So the next meeting, we're earmarking for the 2nd of November. Uh, and we have someone in Kenya who's offered to talk about uh, sand dams, but it's not finally confirmed, but it looks like it will be. Uh, we'll also look at what came up here and see if we can't bring up one or two things that are linked to this. But other than that, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, do stay in touch, do get go and have a look at the uh, website of Waterways. And I see Mercy's just put up a link to a YouTube, so, so cut and paste that. Uh, so that you can see a YouTube film that Porat have done as well. And as others have said, thank you very much, Mercy. Really appreciate you stepping in to your father's shoes, which you did so well. So thanks very much, everybody. Uh, we'll end off there and see you next time. And please tell others about the water school as we, so we can grow it and we can keep learning from each other. And any ideas or thoughts as to how we can take it forward, feel free to email us. It's, it's an informal network that we're taking forward uh, water harvesting across communities in Africa. So,
goodbye, everybody.